It's got tracks instead of wheels, this particular vehicle from Polaris. And uh, we'll, of course, tell you more about why Polaris is here in just a bit. A vehicle like this, very capable in marshy or perhaps even snowy conditions. Now, it's also a good time here at the Defence Expo to always catch up with some of our old friends. And one particular gentleman who's a regular here and someone who I always like to meet up with is Mr. Anand Mahindra. Caught up with him a short while earlier and uh, got a few more details on what he's thinking about in the defence business. We're at the Pragati Maidan and we're at the Mahindra stand here and with me, Mr. Anand Mahindra. Always a pleasure, Anand. And uh, this particular setting becomes a little interesting because uh, every time I've met you here is a time when we've talked about, you know, a very different aspect or a very different part of your business. Um, I want to start off with a sort of a, you know, googly because uh, over the years we've seen the kind of areas that Mahindra wants to go into with defense. It's changed dramatically. I mean, a few years ago, it was all about, you know, whether it was Tata, Mahindra, any of the Indian uh, companies which were seen as uh, wanting to have a foothold in, in the defense space. It was more about saying that, look, here are our existing vehicle platforms, and this is what we can do with them to sort of evolve them into the defense area. Now what you're doing is a lot more than that, isn't it? Yes, and you've given a wonderful preamble to exactly what we are doing. You're right. I think it was almost... Um, a path of least resistance approach that we had adopted towards defense. Here's a platform, what can we add on to it, color it green, you know, and turn it into a military vehicle. And I believe what we've really done is to underscore the strategic importance we see to the defense opportunity in India. And I, I believe the fact that India is now one of the largest arms importers in the world only underscores that what we started doing 10 years ago when we started changing our mindset was right. We saw, we foresaw this opportunity. In fact, there's need more than an opportunity. So what we're doing right now is saying strategically, what's the path forward? What are the defense requirements of this country? In which areas? Where do we want to be? Where do we bring advantages? Or where can we build advantages where we don't have them? And then build a kind of chessboard, if you will, of opportunities. So. We've been fairly, I think, strategic about it. And today you saw the signing of two joint ventures, both not to do with hardware of this monster kind that you see behind me, but what makes this hardware intelligent. So we've signed a JV with Raphael of Israel, with Telefonics of the US. Both of them have very advanced cutting edge, cutting edge electronic systems capabilities, which I believe is where defense expenditure has to be made not just for India, but for any armed force, if you're going to be competitive in battle. But do you see that being a, a larger chunk of your defense business in the future as well? Or would you like to go into areas like even weapon systems? Well, let's put it this way. The, both the JVs that we are talking about are, are speaking about, in one case, half a billion dollars over 10 years, the other one half a billion, and possibly one billion over 10 years if we do get a piece of the FICV pie. These are not small numbers. But always in electronics, the criticality and the profit, profitability intrinsically is far outweighs the brute revenue line. So when you say, will it be a larger part of our business? Yes, in terms of profitability, I think. In terms of competency and criticality, yes. Not necessarily in top line or in investment. But um, given that you are foreseeing a large amount of revenue from this, What's the kind of manpower you'd put behind it? Is it going to be people, are you going to draw from existing uh, uh, resource pool that you have at uh, some of the other technology businesses or would this be just completely fresh from the ground up? No, it'll be a combination. Uh, there is a lot of raw talent that one will recruit, but clearly they have a lot to learn, which is where the joint ventures come in. And we think we will gain a lot from these very, very competent companies that we've allied with. And you're right, even our existing companies like Mahendra Satyam, for example, has had a very strong engineering lineage and competence. And in fact, in a number of the ventures that we are looking at, both in Mahendra Aerospace and in Mahendra Defense, Mahendra Sat is increasingly, uh, Mahendra Satyam is becoming an increasingly uh, critical component of it. In fact, that's the other thing I wanted to ask you because um, that was again not been, uh, it was not really seen as a, as a business opportunity just five years ago. But now, it's not just about uh, 
uh, Mahindra Defense or Mahindra um, Aerospace, but what about the other uh, global uh, client base? Is that something else that you would target with not just Mahindra Satyam, but perhaps even the guys you're putting together now? Target in the sense of the armed forces, you mean? In, in terms of more business, more, more business opportunity. Within the defense area? Yes. Certainly. Let me, let me put it frankly to you that right now the opportunity is India. India is the biggest spender. Has been. Has been. For some time. Has been for some time, you're right. Could be bigger. Yeah, it should, <laughs> could be. And it will continue to grow, yeah. unfortunately, because of the environment that we, are, that we live in. But the opportunity is here. So this has to be the proving ground. Naturally, our alliance partners are coming because of their interest in the Indian market. What we hope will happen is that not only will we garner a good share of this Indian market, but also during the, Im the implementation of these JVs, develop capabilities and validate to our partners that frankly, we are a very integral part or could be an integral part of their global supply chain. A lot of you may be wondering why a brand like Polaris, which makes recreational vehicles, is here at the Defence Expo. But remember that these are very capable machines. They may not be road legal, but uh, they can certainly off-road. And so, which is why there's lots of paramilitary or uh, border security sort of applications that these vehicles can also pull through very capably. And that's why, in fact, this stand is here. And uh, it's a kind of interest that they're trying to evoke here amongst the Defence Forces as well. Do you have the Indie TV Profit app? All the markets, all the news and your own homemade, ready-made portfolio available there for you. We will right now answer what you should sell, what you should buy when markets are down. Download at IndieTVProfit.com slash apps. Get the best app from the channel you trust.